Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, we're talking about Xbox 360 emulation on Android. We're also talking about Lemuroid, Ares, Sega, and Skyline. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off here talking about Xbox 360 emulation on Android with Xenia. Yes, it's in development. No, it hasn't been released just yet. And yes, it's probably gonna be a while before you can play actual games on it. There's a bunch of information and some videos out there that are extremely misleading. No Xbox 360 games are not currently running on Android. This image has been floating around quite a bit, and it's not a game up and running. This is one frame. It's using Xenia's GPU code running on an Android device. It's not really playing anything. And just for some more context here, it might even be years, yes, plural, before we can play 360 games on Android. So if you do see an Xbox 360 emulator app floating around, it's probably fake. If you see an Xbox 360 emulator YouTube channel out there, it's probably fake, just like that fake PS3 one we've talked about a few times. And if you thought Skyline, the Switch emulator on Android, was in early stages of development, well, compared to Xenia, it looks like a completed emulator. And speaking about Skyline, this is a perfect segue into talking about Skyline, the Nintendo Switch emulator on Android, and this is a very quick update. It appears that some testers are using the custom open-source turnip Vulkan drivers to get some better rendering results with Skyline. This is Crash Bandicoot 4 up and running, or Karsh Bandicoot 4. The menu system is rendering pretty darn well, and it's good to see Unreal Engine games getting, well, in-game. I mean, taking a look at Super Mario Odyssey running using turnip drivers, and this is some of the best rendering and playing of the game that I have ever seen on Skyline. So yes, this Skyline update is pretty quick, but it's also pretty big. I mean, 13 to 14 frames a second playing Super Mario Odyssey for a bit before it crashes is a huge step forward. It is worth noting that the footage I just showed you was from a private testing build, and that testing build has not been released to the public just yet. But as soon as it's released, it should show up on the Skyline page, and I'll definitely tell you about it. Next up here, we're talking about Ares, a multi-system emulator on PC designed for emulation accuracy. Ares just got a brand new update. Version 1.29 of Ares just dropped, and if you're interested in reading the change log, I'll leave a link in the description below. Feel free to check it out. We're just going over this at a fairly high level. One of the big things in this release is the addition of Atari 2600 emulation. Although they do say it's not necessarily at a state yet that you should use it over other emulators, but it has been added and they are working to improve it. And we've also got a ton of improvements to N64 emulation. I mean, here's the full list of N64 improvements. You can see that there are a ton of them, but at a high level here, they've added in support for N64 mouse emulation. An N64 emulation is getting so good within Ares that even the N64 port of Linux will boot within this emulator. And in addition to the N64 improvements, a bunch of other systems also got some bug fixes and some love. And speaking of love, the super user-friendly and easy version of Retroarch, Lemuroid, just got an update on the Google Play Store. 3DS emulation is working very well within Lemuroid. This is a Link Between Worlds running on a Red Magic 6R with a Snapdragon 888 processor. You can see it's running very, very well. If we take a look at the options, we've got Quit, Restart, Mute, Fast Forward, Edit Controls, and Settings. And true to form here, the settings are simple and straightforward. There aren't a lot of them, but we do have enough to get you going. For screen layout, we've got Top, Bottom, and Left, Right. We've also got resolution scaling. You can crank this up to 10 times. Now, if you crank it up to 10 times, that's gonna absolutely kill your performance, but you can do it. We've also got accurate shaders multiplication and accurate geometry shaders. If you're a little bit shy about 3DS emulation, or if you're running into issues with 3DS emulation, you might wanna check out 3DS on Lemuroid. It might be the way to go. It's simple, it's straightforward, and it seems to be working. And last up here, we're talking about Sega. If you're into mini consoles, well, today Sega dropped some pretty good news. The Sega Genesis Mini 2 will be making its way over to North America on October 27th. It apparently is even more powerful than the regular Sega Genesis Mini, and it's got over 50 classic games that were previously unreleased on it, including Sega CD titles. I'm on the fence as to whether or not I want to buy one of these, but when it comes to emulation, Sega actually seems to support the emulation community, so I just might support them and pick one of these up. 
On a huge plus side here, they've included the good version of the Genesis controller. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, haul stuff and no fluff. Let me know your thoughts about anything we talked about today in the comments below, and we did talk about quite a bit. Lemroid, let me know if you're using that new 3DS core. Ares, Skyline, uh, Xenia on Android, as well as this new Sega Genesis Mini. Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate, save your state.